Hello there and welcome to my little or not so little arty corner here on YouTube perhaps. Uh, my name's Angela, Angela Porter. I'm an artist and I'm best known, known for my grown-up colouring books that are very often very cute whimsical and often have quite entangled or tangled intricate kinds of patterns in them and so on. Um, but I have a YouTube channel so I can share how I create art, explore patterns and share hints and tips and techniques and inspiration with you. And of course I explore along the way because art is a permanent process of exploration I think and I love to encourage people. I was a teacher for 28 years. I taught science, I did teach a little bit of art later on in my career as I was doing my A-level art but um, might have left teaching, but you can't take the teaching element out of me. And I have, I've had such lovely comments about how much I've inspired people or given them ideas and suggestions to go with. So this is the panel or the, the artwork I'm working on with you. May not do that today though, just saying. But I've added a couple of um, panels here, or oh, squares, boxes, parts. Um, just one that's plain black and one that is part black, part not black. Got plans for that. I may come back to that. This is another one I've been working on and again I didn't like what was up here. It had colours in it and things and it just wasn't working for me. So the best way to get rid of something you don't like is cover it in black and then use either white or a coloured gel pen or opaque inks or paints to create something on the black background. Um, but I haven't done anything more to this. This one though is one I have finished. I've been working on it over the last couple of days. Give me a moment and I will just lift my camera up a little bit so perhaps we can fit it all into... Um, there we go, you get bits of my fingers here. <coughs> not very well organised this morning, I have to say, I'm really not. Um, I've been awake for ages, but I just, <laughs> it's a brain not working as I say that every morning uh, I could say it every evening every afternoon it's just yeah so this I finished and very much inspired by Rebecca Rebecca Blair Blair's art which is very graphic very geometric very organized very perfect in execution I'm not so perfect and um I, I like the wibbly wobbliness and the the odd unexpected things and I've learned to embrace that. I'm human and my hands and muscles don't always want to do what my brain wants them to do at times. And um, I've got more organic-y patterns in here, but I've got a mixture of them. And I did do some hand lettering here and it says, it repeats again over again and again and again, Prog progress over perfection. And yet the words spill off and over because it's more about creating a pattern or a texture with the words than anything else as far as I'm concerned here but that is a lesson I think we all need to take on especially those of us who've experienced hyper perfectionism in the past so crippling I end up doing nothing for fear of even a slight failure or something that isn't quite perfect and of course nothing is ever perfect um, the trick is never to point out what you know are imperfections to other people because they won't notice them. It's true, unless, you, unless it's a glaring thing that everybody can see, don't do it. But um, with this, I finished it, I thought I want to add some colour to bring out um, some depth and some of the patterns and to add some variation here. I don't know if I finished with colour or not, but I used alcohol markers and I use those lovely these lovely bluey soft dusky dusty gray kind of blues that I've used in I'm using on the the one I'm working on with you and I had some unexpected results because of course I knew I'd added gesso over here and little spots of it in places with my finger because I applied it with my finger I thought it's easier to clean my finger than it is to clean a brush. It's true. Gesso in a brush, you can ruin your brushes if you're not careful. So I just thought, right, okay, my finger it is. It was a tanned and 
baby wipe sorted in next to no time. But if you look along here, this is all one marker pen, the same colour, but there's different colours of blue in the background because the gesso doesn't soak up as much of the alcohol ink as the paper does. If I turn this over, you can see this is the line here and I can see where there's gesso because there's no bleed through of the alcohol marker. And the same in the other places, there's a texture gesso there and over here there's some, you can see here and here. And um, I just think that is just fab. So I thought we'd have a look at that today. It will work with white gesso or clear gesso. I'm going to use white gesso. Here I did collage some book pages down, but I don't want to collage book pages today. I don't feel like collaging, though they do give some interesting textures on the edges and so on. And they've lifted up because I didn't glue them all over the back, but the gesso's made them stiffer and firmer so that they will be more stable and will last for a lot longer. Um, and over here where I've got overlaying bits and so on. And I, I really am enjoying this. So with no further ado, let's get to it because I really, really did do enjoy doing that. So I've got my pot of white gesso here, which is insisting on spilling little bits of dried gesso everywhere. It is what it is. I'm just dipping, dipping my finger in. Look, look, tiny bit of gesso. I'm getting mucky and I'm just going to pop it down on you here just in random places. Now clear gesso would preserve the colours underneath. I'm trying not to overwork the gesso as well because I'll shift the distress inks, but I really do want just a little bit because I want that lovely texture that I got. If I can mimic or um, replicate that, because I think it was where I hadn't got much gesso when I was trying, trying to spread it around. Now, if I'm careful with this as the gesso dries, this stenciled pattern here should show through. See, it's drying already because it's um, on my finger, certainly. Gesso really does dry very quickly. And as I'm only applying oops, tiny bits here, it's not going to take long. So you can hardly see the gesso, perhaps. There's enough colour shining through or showing through. It doesn't shine, but it shows through. But we can still see the colour there. And in theory, I could go back and add more colour on the top of this, but I don't want to. I want to keep it quite light because I want to use um, alcohol markers. And yeah, I've chosen a blue background again because rather than going and um, sorting through um, lots of markers, I've got lots of markers, it's ridiculous here now but trying to find the right colours to match a background, I thought I'd stick with that. So there we are, look, clean fingers, one baby wipe. Marvellous. All my wet baby wipes seem to be the thing, the, the tool of choice or the, um, not tool, what's the word I'm looking for? One of, the, one of the weapons in the arsenal of a mixed media artist. And I mean artist tools. In our toolboxes, perhaps I should have said that instead, but you know, we have, we have tools for different reasons. So I think this is dry, feels dry. Yeah, none of it feels cool. So I am going to draw a border around here. Because you know all those lovely wibbly wobbly sections that I had in places like this. I want to do that on here. Now this piece of paper is a quarter of A4. Um, so that is a quarter of letter sized ish. Um, and so it's half the size of A5. So he, this is a little bit smaller than A5. So you can see it's um, about half the size. I cut my paper a little bit smaller than A5. So it will fit in my A5 sketchbook which is no longer really being used as a sketchbook. It's more a, a storage of my 
sketchbook work. So, yeah, this, you know, it becomes an album, I suppose, but it's still a sketchbook because everything's a sketchbook. So I just want to do that and I'm going to use my pencil just to start to draw some sections in here. And I like a pencil for this because it will, we can make it disappear. And if I don't like a line I've drawn, I can easily erase it and start again. My aim isn't to get them like this. I'm not happy with that, that second one I've drawn because I'm, I'm making it look the same kind of shape as the, the first wobbly lines I'm doing. So, and I don't want that, so that's a bit better. Yeah, and the pencil has sunk a little bit into the gesso, but I'm fine with that. It is what it is. And I'm guessing that we could actually have them touching as well. So um, let me have a look. So let's make some sections that are like this. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a lovely sunny day here. And um, the weather's forecast to get really warm in my part of the world, here in the valleys of South Wales on Friday which is a perfect day for me to visit a friend because it will be too hot in my office here to do much in the way of work. But not the perfect day because um, I don't do well in the heat. But um, my car has air con, so at least I can stay coolish on the drive. It'll be it's well over an hour's drive to visit, so which in the grand scheme of things is not a long drive for me, or used to be. Um, but I've done such little travelling or driving in the last couple of years. I'm actually quite nervy about it in many ways. But I'll be fine, I'm sure. And I'm sure that my smart car, my binky, as I call my smart car, it's called, it's called binky, because it's dinky. And also Binky is the name of Death's horse in Terry Pratchett's books. And Death is one of my favourite characters. Because um, Death tries so hard to be human or to understand humanity and fails so desperately. And yet at the same time gets everything completely right. So he has a raven called Quaff, Quaff the Raven. And... Um, the Grim Squeaker, which is the death for ro you know, death of rodents. So you've got death of humans, death of rodents and so on. But I just love the Grim Squeaker. And um, yeah, and he's um, sort of like butler manservant or, you know, chap who looks after death's mansion. It's Albert, who should be dead, but death saved him. Or, you know, I can't remember the whole story because it's been a long time. And then Death has a daughter called Susan and a granddaughter called... No, De no Susan is his granddaughter and Isabeau, Isabel, Isabel, Isabel is his... Um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Daughter, adopted daughter. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's Terry Pratchett, what can I say? I know. Uh, I love Terry Pratchett. There's no other way for me to say that. I'm just digging some pens out here because I'm going to just do some... Um, I've got an 03 here. I don't know why I've got an 05. We'll see. Um, I'm just going to put some patterns in here and I think I may... Let's start by... I am going to draw... The edge of my shape in first. That's why I got the 05 out so I could have a thicker line around the edge of these. Not a problem. And it is what it is. And I think I may Let me have a look here and see if I can pick out a pattern that I particularly liked here 
So I think one of the ones I particularly liked had thicker areas of black in between a series of small or thinner lines. You can see where the gesso is here. If I zoom in, you'll see it even better. You can see here where the line's breaking. It's not my pen, it's the gesso on the background which has a different texture and a different height. And I'm fine with that. In fact, I quite like it because it's an effortless way to get these kinds of um, imperfect lines. The only effort is using your finger to apply a little bit of gesso here and there on the background. I am not counting my lines. I'm not even making sure I've got an odd number of lines in between the wider sections. It's true. I'm not, or even counting the number of narrow, clear, you know, lighter coloured sections to check that there's an even number there. Nope, I'm not doing it. Shocker. If you know me and my obsession with things arranged in odd numbers. I bet you've all been counting to see what I've got here. Well, some of you will, and you'll tell me, Angela, you did more odd-numbered areas than you did. And the chances are, yeah, I may have. But I'm not counting. I cannot count and talk. And yet I'm letting some of these lines get a bit wider. Especially on this area here, I think feels like they should be a little bit on the wider side and yet I've missed out quite a few got some black areas there so let's stick one in I can tell there's gesso under my pen here because the pen feels almost like the pen sticks to it the gesso isn't dry it's just the surface texture of it well the paper I'm using is um, it's mixed media paper. It's quite thick. It's got a fairly smooth surface, but there is texture to it. You get that with all mixed media paper because it's it's meant for lots of different media. So the thickness of it means it's going to be very robust and will you know cope well with lots of things. You know different kinds of media, lots of wet surf, you know wet work and so on particularly with paints and inks. But there's a tooth to it so that you can use um, things like coloured pencil, charcoal and so on. So there's a tooth there for them to grip to. So and this one is by Artway. And it's not perfectly white. It's got a greyish tinge because I think it's recycled paper, which is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I bought it on Amazon and it was, wasn't expensive. I think I got a pack of 50 sheets and they come in a really lovely cardboard like folder to store, you know, storage folder. And, um, I'm finding, I'm using them more and more when I'm, well, I will be using them more and more when I'm adding gesso and things like that because they just cope with it so much better. Now I can see I've got a pencil line here, so guess what? I'm going to make use of that and draw in a section like this. And I am deliberately not filling the gaps in or the whole of the the whole of the edge down down here. I'm leaving the gaps where they are. If I want to at a later date, I can always come back and connect them. But for now, I like them as they are. Okay, so. Yesterday, I didn't get as much done as I wanted to do. It took me ages to do a template and then 
I got to that point where I just couldn't keep my eyes open. I forced myself to stay awake. I did not nap yesterday. Um, I've made a right mess of that edge. I wonder if I could use gesso to cover that up. Most probably. Okay, this section here, I'm going to have a, something that's a contrast to the very geometric or graphic you know, straight, yeah, structural, linear pattern here. And I'm going to use one of my favourite filler patterns, known in Zentangle as Perk. And here I started with the, the biggest in the centre and then I'm going to layer all the others from one side to the next behind it or behind each other so it feels that they are falling away as well and because they get smaller in size to the edges that suggests your mind will try and say oh they're all the same size because they're all the same kind of shape because they're smaller, they must be further away. And because this one's bigger, it's got to be closer. And of course, you bring that illusion out with shadow. So I really do need to get some work done. So this may not be a very long video, but it'll be something. And I'm not working on the other parts. It's, I just want to show you this gesso. So I've got some gesso on this section. So let's do something here. And I think I'm going to... I want to do something that has some larger areas that I can fill in. This has turned out to be a favourite as well. Well, zigzags always are with me. Um, I fell in love with zigzaggy patterns when I was looking, and still do, at Romanesque architecture. You often find these in the rounded arches and Romanesque churches and abbeys of that era and so on. You know, Romanesque for us in, uh, here in the UK is just after the Norman invasion. So 1066 onwards. And my most favouritest little church in the whole wide world, and if I could, I'd slip it into my handbag and bring it home with me. It's not that little, by the way. I'd need... A handbag like a Miami Granger that could swallow it up. Uh, it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's proper name is St Michael and All Angels, I think. But it's known as Kilpet Church because it's close to the Herefordshire village of Kilpet, which is just outside of Hereford. And I haven't been there for about, oh, three years now because um, that P word... But perhaps I will make a trip there once I've got this book done and on cooler, less sunny days because uh, my weird skin and, the, well, the cream I have to put on my face warns me about going out in sunshine and my doctor warned me and, you know, high, f high F SPF even in the middle of winter. Well, with a high S, you know, factor 50 or factor 60 cream on my face in the middle of winter on a dull day, I still manage to get sunburn. So I'm very cautious. Yeah. You know, the best time to go out for me now this time of year is very early in the morning, before the sun is well up. I'm not well up then or late in the evening after the sun has, or when the sun is beginning to set when it's low in the sky. I have often have things going on in the evenings. But there we go, so that's really nice. And I think I may, there's my pencil, it's there. This section, I think I might like to actually do something here. First, get some lead through the lead out like this so I've got some of these um, 
smaller sections going on as well. This is a, a lovely alternative to using those very um, rigid boxes. You know, very. This, this, this is a much more organic way of splitting the paper up into little sections. So yesterday I saw a picture of a um, sort of like a layout for a quilt. And I thought, my gosh, that looks a lot like what I'm doing here. So I've called these samplers, but they could almost be pattern quilts as well, which I also think is a, a really cute way of saying things. So let's have a look here. Um, I've got these two sections and then we'll add some marker. Okay, on this one, do I want to do, I think I want to, So I'm adding little rounded arches and half arches here. So I'm doing two halves and then a hole. Two halves and then a hole. All the way along and they do get bigger which I'm fine about, and I think I'll put a whole one in at the end there. These corners I'm just going to fill in with black, essentially because I can, but also because I have plans for doing these. So what I'm doing is, and you'll see better when I get to a bigger one, is I'm putting um, some black inside each of these so we form a little semicircle and then I'm putting a little aura around them like that so it just helps to add some contrast into the pattern that density of ink it gives um, a particularly nice finish I think It helps to see that we've got half and half, as it were, you know, sort of like um, half an arch and then a full arch. There we go. Looks almost like scales, doesn't it? Fish scales and mermaid scales. Come back to that in a moment. And then this one. I think I'm going to perhaps split this a little bit again, but I'm going to use lines and patterns to actually um, define this area. As I think on the top, I'm going to put very fine lines, sometimes with a break in them. Perhaps every other one I'll break in the middle because that creates that repeating pattern then. And I'm making sure that I bend the lines with, as I say, I'm going to break every other one. And what have I just done? Started to break every one. Trying to make the lines sort of like, um, as if they, are curving with this line so they'd be close together along the line and further apart around this edge because it's wider if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen it's no great shakes but and I keep finding as I'm talking I'm forgetting full line broken line full line broken line except I got two full lines there so we'll pop a broken line in I didn't leave a big enough gap. It happens. 
already beginning to turn the corner here before I get to the corner. Oh, two lines. So much easier to do when I'm not focusing on talking at the same time. But there we go. So that works nicely. So we've got that. And what could be fun would be actually to do it this way. So actually I might do that. Because what I want to do is to have an angle. So these would be going this way. And perhaps these ones then would go like this. And I will make these complete lines. And they will kind of end up at a different angle to the smaller ones. And that will give us that feeling there might be a ridge in the middle here. I think that works-ish. I've got some gaps on this side that I think I want to just put a very light line in. That'll work. Okay, so with no further ado, because time is marching on for me here and for you, I'm trying not to take up too much. Oh, there's a cool grey still lurking out there. I'd be long. I'd, I'd clear up. I put lots of things back. Okay, so. I'm going to use a blue pen to colour in the background here. This is a marker pen and I'm hoping this doesn't bleed too much. That's the ocean blue. I wanted a slight powder. This is the darkest of the, the blues I've got out. And hopefully we'll get that patchiness going on. I can already see I, I am because I've got some patchiness on the edge there where there's gesso. And this may be actually a good thing that I'm using gesso on this paper because I think this paper just soaks up alcohol marker. Though I'm not sure because I'm not sure I've used alcohol markers on this paper. I'm getting some, no effort at all, I'm getting some lovely textural patterns here as well where the gesso is because I tried to apply it roughly and patchily. Where the, where the marker pen is lighter here and over here is where the gesso is and where it's darker that's where there's no gesso so I've automatically got that that interesting variation that has that randomness in it that I like but I find difficult to do with watercolor media or anything else so with gesso I'm able to get this interesting effect without using water soluble media and using alcohol markers okay I am going to add some shadow on this and I think I'm going to put the shadow towards the bottom I've got an issue here I think I used um, a DX pen and I think it needs a fair amount of time to dry on the gesso because it's actually moving with the alcohol marker but where there's no gesso that's not a problem so that's something to bear in mind but as it is it's fine it works just that hint of a shadow there okay and um let me have a look this one i definitely want to see if i can get some shadow oh gosh i'm hoping this isn't clogging up it's not it'll be fine i don't want the ocean no, that's the next darkest so let's have a look at this ocean blue and see if that will I think I'm okay with some of this bleeding. In fact, let's put, put it right the way along the edge, that shape. Oh, 
And by bleeding, I mean it's the um, it's the uh, pen, not the alcohol marker. So here I'm just using this to try and get a kind of gradient going. So instead of drawing across the pen lines, I'm trying to draw in between the pen lines and get the this darker marker to blend out just that little bit, which I think it's beginning to do. I think it does it easier on gesso than it does on paper because it doesn't really it sticks to gesso like alcohol markers will stick to any medium. But um, here it's quite nice on the gesso easy to blend it out so I've got something going there a bit heavy-handed here though I have been but I think that's just gonna have to be what it is for now perhaps if I it's not a lot I can do about that I don't think just clean that up so I've got a colorless blender actually I wonder if either make a complete pig's ear but oh of course a white gel pen then I want to do something with my perks so I'm going to pop shadows at the bottom and where they overlap and this is where it's going to be interesting because I've got very light colour where there's gesso and hardly any colour at all where there's I hardly any colour at all where there's gesso, but where there's no gesso, I'm getting quite a lot of colour being put down here. So I think on the ones where there's some gesso, I'm just going to go back and just add a little hint of this darkest blue. Of course, with gesso, there is no bleeding of the alcohol marker. Where you put it, it stays, so it doesn't bleed into the paper, which is a good thing. As far as I'm concerned, it is. I can see how the tip of this pen has been um, dyed with a black pen. But it'll be fine, as long as it doesn't affect the colour that comes out, which I don't think it will. Just scribble it on paper. Yeah, and it's coming off. Mostly, that's fine. So I've got some shadowing on the perks. And this one, um, I'd like to pop some shadow along the edge. So I'm picking the, I've got four different alcohol markers here. So this one is not the darkest, but the next darkest. And it's picking ink up. It takes a while for the for, it, for these inks to you know, sort of like settle on the gesso, but they will. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I am going to go back here and I am just going to use a white gel pen just to remove some of that darker colour there. That's a bit better, and I will use it down the centre just to give a clear highlight there. On the perk I'm going to use this to pop some white dots right to the top of each of the perks. And this one I'm using a Uniball Signo simply because I discovered I had these. I forget what I've got. I was hunting for the 06 this morning and I uh, couldn't find the 06. 06 um, jelly roll, white jelly roll. So here I'm just going to add slightly darker blue to give the shadow and instead of running it along the line I am flicking it upwards within each of these sections. Just to you can see again here where the colour is so much darker. Just along these sections there's no gesso. So 
that would be nice. And I will use the lightest colour here just to see if I can blend this out a little bit. Works on gesso, I think. Yeah, very much so. That's a bonus of gesso as well. It makes blending colours out easily, easier. This side, I don't think I need too much over here. Just want to see if I can get that moving. And there we are, so we've got that. So, my discovery of gesso. Just zoom out. That bit of gesso on the paper, just little patches of it, and everything just it, it has it gives it a different effect. It's um, if I compare, oh, yeah, there we go. So, if you have a look at these two, this section here behind these, it's that motif again. Here, there's no gesso. And the colour is quite flat. It's the same in the whole section except for the shadowed areas. But here you can see the patchiness and that kind of interest that's going on. And I really like that. Again, you know, here, apart from where I put the white alcohol dots, very flat, very much the same on here in the black. But here I've got this lovely change. So I found something new to use. Um, not quite sure what effect it's going to have on the nibs of the alcohol markers. I think with Artezas you can buy replacement nibs. I'm going to have to check on that one. I certainly know I code for my um, chameleon pens if I decide to use those. Um, so that's that's always a possibility. I'm not sure about the oh -hoo hoos to be honest. So, you know, I'm not going to worry too much if I wreck the nibs, um, you know, before the ink runs out because that's an, old, that's an option for me. But I hope that's given you an idea. Obviously, I'm not saying you have to run out and buy gesso, not at all. I'm sure that you could, I, I say I'm sure, it depends what medium you're using. So for example, if you wanted to use something like a, a, a water solid medium, you could use some kind of wax, crayon, wax pencil as a kind of resist as well. But I've, I found that fun, so I wanted to share that with you. So, I will see you again, pro probably tomorrow, which is Thursday the 16th. Today's Wednesday the 15th, because I'm not going to be around on Friday. And I'm having a break from doing weekly colouring templates until the beginning of next month, most probably. Because um, I've got to get my work done. <laughs> and what am I doing? I'm making videos. But I, I like to start my day off with some art just for pleasure. It's not saying that the art I do for work isn't pleasurable. It's different. There's a pressure on me to do things in a certain way and, and to, to have things very polished and not with mistakes and, and, and so on. Whereas this is just for my own personal pleasure, where if I make a mistake, uh, it's like here or like which one? Here. It, I can do something about it because it's my work. Uh, I mean, the other stuff is my work. So there we are. So we've got quite a few bits and pieces going on here, haven't I? A few, few works in progress. Well, that one's now finished, mostly, I think. I like this one. I do. I'm, I'm really pl pleased with that. I know it's very much reminiscent of um, Rebecca Bla Blair's work, but um, sometimes you've got to work that way to find your way through to something that is how you work. It's exploring. So take care. Find time to be creative and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye.